Roy on Rescue. We're a little mobile today. We've got lots of things to do, and I wanted to take advantage of this time to really answer a question that came in via email that I didn't really want to drag my feet on. I'm sitting here with Jody Marvin, uh, who is the manager of training and compliance, and we're working on some training issues actually as we speak. The question that came in was from a person who is, sounds like they have like a three month old baby who actually has a tracheostomy. Now, her question was, what do I do if I don't have the proper equipment and I'm out and about and need to actually suction and or breathe for this baby? It's a phenomenal question and hopefully we can shed some light on this. Now, most of the time, when a person has a, a, a child or ha knows somebody who has a serious um, uh, medical need like this, you're not even going to probably get home without having some special training in the area of how to suction, deep suction, how to keep all those secretions really thin, and how to do clean technique or sterile technique uh, suctioning. But in the case that, that a person does not have the proper equipment or it malfunctions, there are a couple things that you can do. First of all, I think it's important to realize that breakdowns on equipment can happen all the time. It happens even on ambulances. So what happens to us is we need to make sure that we're, we're checking our equipment before we go. We look to see that we have backup batteries to be able to, to change out a battery if possible. And then we also know that if we got a, something malfunctioning, we're going to get on the telephone and get a backup ambulance or a rescue unit out to us right away to bring us new and working equipment. The same thing kind of applies to you. If you don't have equipment that's working or you're missing your equipment, call 911. Secondly, if the baby is in respiratory distress, we don't want to wait until the baby is really to the point of not breathing anymore or going unconscious. Stitch in time saves nine, early bird gets the worm, all of the cool Benjamin Franklin quotes about making sure that you're looking how to prevent things through proactive behaviors, this is exactly the time to do that. If you see that the baby is having secretions, maybe running a temperature, that's the time to call your doctor and make sure you're getting an antibiotic or getting treatment for a possible infection. Don't wait until the baby has pneumonia and is filling up with fluids and is having a difficult time systemically to uh, get the baby help. Remember that in infants and children, it, their cardiac arrest is almost always respiratory driven, not usually cardiac driven like someone like uh, you know an elderly adult or a middle-aged adult who's got a lot of cholesterol and fat buildup and things like that. If you can manage a baby's airway, you can usually manage their life. If the baby is in a, in a situation where it needs rescue breathing, there's a, some special issues that you need to take into consideration. Obviously, the baby has a tracheostomy or a tracheotomy. We're not going to be giving conventional rescue breathing. We need to remember that in those situations, you're going to cover the nose and the mouth, and then we're going to put a mask or a shield over the tracheotomy, and that's where we're going to actually give the ventilations. So, sealing around either the ostomy or the, the tracheotomy or the trach tube, we're going to need to prepare ourselves and have the right equipment with a one-way valve. Not just for our protection if it's a stranger, but also for the protection of the patient. Our mouth is full of germs and bacteria, and we can give them a serious infection if they don't already have one by putting our mouth on that tracheal tube. Plus, believe me, you won't want to do that. So prepare. Have the personal protective equipment with you when you need it, not after the fact. And then you're going to ventilate this child and provide CPR according to the Emergency Cardiac Care Subcommittee Guidelines or the American Heart Guidelines. Everything else stays the same. It's just the technique on how you're going to deliver those rescue breaths. So, I hope this was helpful. Um, definitely email me clarification questions if I didn't address the issues because I can, I can understand how this is really important. But I hope this was helpful. Keep on rescuing, and until next time, this is Roy with Roy on Rescue. Have a great day. Bye-bye.